Hey guys, uh, we're back with another video. This one is a fun one that we did in 2017. This was actually our honeymoon. We did this trip a week after we got married. And rather than going and doing something that was kind of expensive, we decided to go get stinky in the wilderness instead. So this is a climb of Mount Febus in the Wind River Range. So stay tuned uh, to see some pictures and discuss a uh, discussion of that peak. So I'm guessing you have never heard of Mount Febus. Uh, it's a very obscure peak. It is, however, the 11th highest mountain in Wyoming. It's 13,468 feet. And it is the high point of Horse Ridge, which kind of runs along the eastern front of the northern winds uh, for about 30 miles, a uh, long stretch of it over 10,000 feet. And then uh, the south end of it is where the summit is. And uh, you kind of can see it as you're, as you're hiking in. And, um, this was Rachel's first trip up and over Arrow Pass. We've been up to Arrow Pass a couple times in the three years prior, um, but this was her first trip kind of in the, uh, on the glacier trail up in the northern winds. So what were your thoughts? Well, on the previous trips, I'd had trouble with headaches getting right to the top of Arrow Pass, and you know, this was the first time that I'd actually made it over, so it was really exciting because you can't really see what's on the other side until you get to the very top and I finally made it so it was really neat to to be able to see well, I guess the bog down at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once you cross over um, Arrow Pass you go down into Burrow Flat which is this kind of it's the trails easy to follow but it's in most of the summer it seems like there's a lot of really nasty boggy stretches marshy yeah before you get down to phillips lake and then you get to the cool forest that's one of my yeah. favorite parts at the end of the flat where there's a fire yeah i think there was a fire there at one point it's kind of a odd looking bird forest but it's, it's really pretty yeah and then uh so the, the first day we went all the way we only had four days for this trip, so it was another kind of, it was like the knife point trip and that we had to be out of there quick. Um, and so we went all the way, so since it was our honeymoon, we thought it was fitting that we should look at Honeymoon Lake. So as you're dropping down uh, after Star Lake, you, you get to see Honeymoon Lake down below, but you, the trail never comes close to it. So um, there's a picture of Rachel next to Honeymoon Lake as we were getting close to camp that night. That long downhill is a huge slog. Um, it was it was pretty brutal. The bugs were awful. I remember <laughs> this was kind of I think maybe the last trip. Maybe we did one more. We were done. We did one more before we decided we need to start taking a mosquito net to just tie to the tents and trees because it's just they're so bad in the winds uh, the scenery is worth it though so on day two we went uh through wilson meadows and and kind of headed up towards the dinwoody area uh, we stopped and camped around ten thousand four hundred feet we didn't want to go too far up because we knew we were going to be climbing the next morning and heading part of the way out so uh we made camp kind of up fairly high, this beautiful view back north of the, over the valley, and then um, there's waterfalls coming off the uh, West Sentinel, and and over you can see up the Gannett Creek drainage, and it's just a beautiful place. Um, I It's one of my favorite spots in the world to camp, I think, just because yeah. you, know, you watch the sunset, and as you'll see, uh, the pictures, there's just, you know, it's hard to take a bad picture in that area. Yeah. So, uh, the, the next morning, so we were headed up, um, to, we had planned on going up to Black Rock Pass, which is between Mount Febus and Sunbeam. And as we started heading up that early the next morning, uh, we had to cross the, the big creek and then started heading up and we started running into some snow banks that were really hard. And so we were kind of getting a little frustrated at the slowness of the going at that point. And Rachel was like, well, why don't we head straight up this green field? And I was kind of like, 
nah, that looks really loose and not very fun. <laughs> so we ended up doing it anyway. It had to be 800, 1,000 feet. It's one of those those slopes where you go up a little ways and drop back a little ways. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's ex it's exhausting. You get a ton of rocks in your shoes if you're stupid and don't bring gators, which I don't think we did. I don't think so. Well. <laughs> we weren't planning on doing something like that. Yeah. And you ended up being totally fine once we got on it. And then when we got toward the top, you had like distanced yourself from me, and I got a little freaked out. Yeah, it's definitely not not a low angle grade, as you can see. You know the. Uh, you looking back to Gannett Peak, you know this the uh, the angle of that climb is is pretty steep. I think so. I was worried that that going down was going to be really hard, mm -hmm. but once we actually started going down, it was way easier than going up. So it wasn't a problem yeah. at all. Gravity, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it was a really fun peak to climb because uh, it was a clear day without any haze and we were able to watch a bunch of parties on Gannett Peak and just kind yeah. of see their progress. We had, we had kind of made friends with a foursome that were headed in to climb Gannett and we were watching their progress and, and kind of seeing people, how they handled the Bergschrund and, and all of that. Some people just flying up it and some people seemed like they stopped and stayed in one place for 20 minutes <laughs> in the middle of the snow fields, if I remember. Um, so once you once you get up onto Horse Ridge, uh, you kind of hang a little bit of a right, and it just feels like it goes on forever. Grass and rocks, mm -hmm. and more grass and rocks, and um, you finally get to the the high point. It's it's a one of the best views I think in the winds. Uh, it's often touted to have the best summit view of all the thirteeners there because uh, you're kind of offset from the main crest, and you just have as you'll see the panoramas. There's just the huge mountain vistas off to. Uh, the the west and it's it's amazing up there. There's some register. I remember signing that. Mm -hmm. um, really cool views over Fremont Glacier to Jackson and Fremont Peaks, and it was awesome. We didn't dawdle too long up there because we knew we had a lot of hiking left. <laughs> well, it's so open, and there's such a trudge once you get to like the actual flat area. You see the views forever, so it's not like mm -hmm. you have to hang around and take it in forever up on yeah. top yeah so headed back down um like rachel said it would, went faster going down you could you could do some screeing where you just kind of plunge step your heel in and just go down there were some spots though where the rocks were just big enough that it was a little bit Dangerous. risky to do that i think we made it back to camp somewhere around She's probably 2.30ish maybe, and then I think we ate some food and then packed up camp and then I think we hiked out another two hours and it, we were pretty wiped, I think. The, the, my feet were hurting, back was hurting. Um, we, got, we got to a spot and camped um, kind of before the, about a mile before the bridge. Um, and it wasn't a bad camp spot, um, but we were just so tired, we didn't really enjoy it. Yeah. And we knew that we had a huge uphill climb. So the worst part about exiting the Glacier Trail up to the north is the 1,200 feet of vertical that go up past Honeymoon Lake to Star Lake. It is awful, and I've done it more times now than I wish to admit. I When I did it first, my climb Gantt Peak in 2010, I was like, never again am mm -hmm. I going to go up this hill. And... We've done it at least twice, maybe three times. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> so we, we made sure to get to the hill at the when it was still cool out, and you just go so slow. And it's not like a nice trail going up. There's so many places where the trail's here, and then there's a big rock, and then a big rock, and it's it's like climbing stairs two at a time for you know higher than the Empire State Building. It's it's a you lot can of work. see the switchbacks in some spots where it's just you're literally climbing up this. <laughs> almost vertical hillside and people ride horses up and down it but it does not seem like a fun no. idea to me. <laughs> well and then so then you're stepping over other stuff besides rocks because the horses have been on the trail Lots yeah of... and it, the mileage out that day we probably did at least 15 or 16 <laughs> miles and i remember getting to phillips lake and heading up burrow flat it still feels like middle of the day but you get to arrow pass and it takes forever to get back to the car and I remember blisters were starting to be a problem, and we were just hot, and 
got back to the car, I think 4.30 or 5, and then had a four and a half, five hour drive home. <laughs> I think we had to work the next day. So Arrow Pass is always super misleading because it, you can see everything. You can see the other side of it. And so it seems like it's only going to take, you know, no time at all. Yeah, and then some, it takes forever. It never ends. Yeah, there's something about those big plateaus in the winds where you just have, you know, you're like, oh, that's just over there. And then you walk for an hour and it doesn't seem any closer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, that's... You do that for a long time, but it, it was a great trip. Uh, definitely a peak that I was glad to, to get under my belt. And then it was, it was cool because, um, the following year, 2018, we went and did Sunbeam on our through hike from Dubois to Pinedale. And so we got to see the, the next peak over from Blood Rock Pass and I and actually like that mountain better. So had uh, we planned on doing both? We had talked about doing both because we thought, well, if we run up Fevis, you can just go down to Black Rock and then up Sunbeam, and you get two kind of for the price of one. But timing wise, as far as we had to get out that third day, it just wasn't going to happen. So, uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, it would be much appreciated. And we'll see you around for more hikes and beers soon. Cheers. Cheers. This video from the top of Mount Fevis. Across to Knife Point, Mount Jackson, or Jackson Peak, Fremont, Sacagawea. Going up to the Bonnie Pass Peaks, to Gannett, Coven.